Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, Rockwell Alan Brownlee motion control series video. In this video, we will mainly talk about the motion command. For example, home, power on, move, jog, and stop command. They are commonly used the motion control, especially to control the access in manual mode. In the previous video, I introduced how can we import the prepared template. That template date type allows us to quickly build up the variables. So those variables could be very easy to use to connect to the motion command. So in this video, we will directly go to the motion command programming. All right, let's start. And the main platform, what I'm using, that is a Rualco Alan Brandy Software Studio 5000 and controller what I'm using, that is a Compact Logics. That Compact Logics will have a ERM, this name. That means that is the motion control built-in controller. So firstly, let's program the enable signal. And the output will be our positioning access application command dot the safety OK enable. And the control signal, that is a safety OK. So here we can create one safety all OK signal. So we will declare this variable as controller tag. So we select the controller tag. So this variable will be controlled by the safety logic. And the safety logic will give a safety all OK signal. And this variable will be used to enable every other instructions. So this is a global enable, basically. And after this, let's program the reset signal. If you recall, when we try to use the motion direct commands, that time we test the access. So firstly, we need to reset the access and then power on the access if you are using the actual motion controller. First things, we need to reset the access to reset access. So we can use access application command and dot the fault reset. Use this tag. And this is a command variable. And this variable will be used to reset. To reset the access, we will find the command motion access fault reset as this motion status group, okay? Drag to here. The access, which access we need to reset? That is this access. So from here, we can select, that is this, access one underscore virtual. So at here, double click from this drop down list, we can select access one virtual. And this motion control. So how we can type in here? That's why we pre-declared that variables under this main program here. So here, motion control. If we click this drop down list, we declare this positioning access underscore MC. The MC used the date type MC instruction here. Within that instruction, we can go to find the recite, access recite that instruction. We can scroll down here. The fault recite, we can select this. So keep in mind that date type, that is uh, the motion instruction. Okay, this is a motion instruction, but we cannot directly reset like this. Basically, we need to guarantee if the system has a fault, we can reset. So at here, we can do a compare. So let's go to find the compare instruction and use the not equal. How we can find the access fault? If we go to the controller tag and from this access underscore virtual, this access fault includes all the faults from this access. That is one integer. So we can use this integer, compare if this access fault equal to zero. Okay, we can copy and go back to the program access one. And here, use the access virtual access fault. Compare it with the 16 hex zero. Also, we will involve one signal. And this signal come from the access also. So our access virtual one dot shutdown, shutdown status. Because we have another reset, that is a shutdown reset. If the system is not at the shutdown status, we can directly reset this access. If the access is within the shutdown status, so we can drag here. 
if we are under the shutdown status, then we will use another command. So that command, we need to go to find, we find the motion state, find this, motion access shutdown reset, drag to here. And access, same thing, we select the access one, virtual, okay, this access. And this motion command, so let's click this, positioning access underscore MC, this MC instruction, and let's find this access shutdown preset. I used this state type predefined this shutdown reset, this motion instruction, double click. Then this line reset the access we done this programming. So here, right click, edit, run, comment. So we can write this reset. And after this reset, we will program the power on. Let's right click, add a run. To power on the access, so we will select this uh, motion server on. Drag here. And the access drop list, we can see the server on, the only access we can find, that is the CIP drive access in this project. So the virtual access, we cannot program to server on it. That makes sense because this is a, the virtual access. It doesn't connect with the actual server controller, right? So that's why the MSO, this is server on, we cannot select this virtual. But in actual cases, we need to program this server on. Basically in my project here, this MSO running as a space holder because from my target, after we program this MC instruction, this subroutine, all those programs can be used as a template for yourself to control one actual access we need this power on, this server on command. So temporarily, I will select this access tool. I know the current routine, we are mainly programming this access one. This is just used as a space holder. Just to mention us, we cannot forget this. And this motion control, so drop list, so we can select, so we can select the server on, okay, here. And the command to trigger this server on. Firstly, we need to use the safety OK enable signal. And then we need a server on command. So the server on command, we can use positioning access application command dot server on. So server on, okay? So we can see using the date type, we predefine those tag. Otherwise, we will take a lot of efforts on naming and declare the tags here. Okay, server on. Here, I would like to mention of this uh, Rockwell Allen Brownlee MSO server on. That is a little bit different with other server on or power on command. For example, Siemens power on access. For other brands, this server on, we need to make it true. Turn this always on. If this signal job, so the server will be off. But Alan Brandley does a different way. So if we hit a F1, and this is the motion server on, and look at this enable. So Alan Brandley use the force to true, the transition. It's using the rising edge to turn this on. That's why other than this server on, we also need a server off. Use the rising edge to trigger the server off to turn off the server power. So keep in mind here, this is the trigger signal rather than the flight signal, okay? This is the server on, and this is the CIP drive. Keep in mind, for the virtual, we do not need to program this, but in actual case, we need to program the server on. And next, that is server off, okay? Next line. For the server off, we will use the motion server off, this command, drag to here, and this access. Same thing, once we click this drop list, the only access we can select, that is the CIP drive, we can now select this virtual access. Same thing, I will use these two lines as a space holder here, okay? So this instruction, I will select the mc.serveroff, this instruction, motion instruction. Then the command to trigger this server go off, firstly, we can use the safety enable. If the safety enable this signal from on to off, 
and we will also use this ONS here. That is the one condition to trigger this server go off. Okay, so here we will use the POS ONS dot. We declare this ONS as a the dent. So this dent includes 32 bits. So here we will use the bit one, okay, for this rising edge, for this rising edge, and the next rising edge. We can use the server off command, positioning access application command dot server off. Okay, server off command. So we will use another rising edge. Okay, we will use next rising edge bit. If we have a other command to turn off the servo, so we can do the parallel logic to this way. So the reason why I program this way rather than this way, so sometimes we will use this way. This is very dangerous. If by some reason, if one command always on here, so even if you have other trigger signal, it cannot trigger because this signal already on. So other signal cannot go through this rising edge. So I highly recommend you use the individual ONS for the different rising edge command. Otherwise, sometimes you cannot turn off the servo. Using the individual ONS can guarantee if we have a trigger signal, every trigger signal can go through to control this servo off command. Keep in mind the servo on and the servo off, they all trigger signal. They are waiting for the rising edge from off to on. In actual case, we will program as this way. But if just to do some virtual access test, actually you do not need these two runs here because this virtual access, we do not need a server on and off. Okay, next, that is the home the access. Firstly, let's program one home command. This command dot home access here. And the MC instruction, let's go to the MC control so motion move and find the motion access home. Okay, drag to here. And this access, home access, virtual access workable. So we can select the access one and score virtual, this access, so double click. And this motion control, this instruction from this job list, same thing, positioning access underscore MC, we will select the home command. And at here, we can use this safety OK enable here. Also keep in mind, from my experience, most of the cases to home one access, that is under the manual mode. That's because every time we home the access, probably your access value will immediately written by this home position, for example, zero or other initial value. That means your access value will immediately jump from your existing position to a home preset value. And if your machine running in auto mode and in auto mode you home the access, maybe your access value will jump or change immediately, not seamless. So that will cause the potential mechanical crash or some wear movement. So keep in mind, most of the cases, I highly recommend home the access only in manual mode. It also depends on your application. Some case to eliminate the accumulated error, we have to use the auto mode to home the access. It depends on the application. All right, so here we can add one mode here. That is the manual mode, cell, manual. Okay, so this cell manual variable should come from your cell global manual mode. Okay, so, so we know to home this access, we need the cell in manual mode and the safety should be okay, okay? And this is the home, the access. And then the same thing, if we are under the menu mode, probably on HMI, we have a jog button, for example, forward the access or backward the access. So if the cell under in menu mode, we will use that jog, basically do a speed control, the slow speed control to forward or reverse this access. So next things we will program the jog command, okay? So firstly, we need this okay and in manual mode. To use that jog command, we will use this. So motion access jog, drag to here. 
access here. Let's select this virtual access. And motion control. So job list, let's select the jog. Let's select this jog, okay? And the direction. Direction we can use when variable because from different button from HMI, probably if you press the forward, so this direction will be the zero. And if you press the reverse, this direction will be the one. So the direction here, it can be controllable. Here we can use when variable we declared before. Command dot drag direction. This direction signal, this is a dent. That's double integer, not the bool signal. And default, this drag direction is zero. Zero means forward. And which command can control this direction? So at here, we can program two conditions here. So firstly, so at this area, we can program the logic as this. From this command, jog forward command, we can move this jog direction zero to this variable. This is this. And also we can set one speed. So this speed is hard copy a jog speed. And this jog speed will be used at here. So we can copy this jog speed, paste here. And for this jog reverse, and once this variable turn on, we write one to this direction. Keep in mind this direction variable, that is a double int. And in the meantime, we will write a speed. And the speed unit, we can select. For example, we can select the unit per second. And the unit here, we set this unit from this axis here. If we double click, and from this unit, if we set a millimeter here, so this unit per second, that will use this unit here, okay? Click this expand. We have a lot of variable we need to set here. So next, this acceleration rate for the jog. So we will use mc underscore variable that jog acceleration rate. So we will use this mc underscore variable jog acceleration. And this acceleration unit, so we can select this. And deceleration rate, this similar idea. So we will use mc underscore var jog deceleration. Okay, and this profile, we can select this uh, trapezoidal and the S curve. So S curve will be a little bit easier job for the mechanical. S curve will allow your mechanical system run as a smooth, run as a curve. But this uh, trapezoidal will make your system running very sharp. I will select this uh, trapezoidal, this profile, because if we select the S curve, sometimes if we manually control this axis, the axis will show us very smooth and soft. So probably that position you cannot stop at the accurate position. Okay, so this trapezoidal, I will select this. Acceleration jerk, so we will select the jerk variable. So variable jog acceleration jerk. Deceleration jerk and the jerk unit. Okay, we will select the units per second and the jerk unit is here. So the merge, <coughs> merge disable, so this command will not be override. So merge speed, so we'll select the program. So lock position, so we will select zero. And lock direction, so we will select none. So we will now use the lock. Okay, other than those variables here, we need to type in those jog acceleration and deceleration and the jerk value. For example, here we can use one testing value. For example, I will set 2000. And the jerk, we can set this. Okay, this is a jog command. Basically, the jog forward and the jog reverse, those variables will be connected to the HMI. So from the HMI, once we press the forward or reverse button, so it can control the variable. But here, we need to mention one thing. This MAG, basically, once we trigger this command, it will run with this speed setting. So for example, run 200. And then, how we can stop it? From other brands, motion control, especially for jog command. This command, the jog forward will be on. So once your jog command go off, the jog will be disabled. The motion will stop. However, 
from Alan Bradley, this MAG basically running as a speed control. Once you trigger it, it will keep moving. It will not stop. So you must be careful about this. That means we need to program one stop command to stop the jog, this motion. Okay, so let's program next one. So we will use the stop, motion access stop. Select here, access select the access virtual and the motion control this instruction. I especially created this motion instruction, the jog stop, okay? And stop type here, we can select the jog. This especially stop the jog, this speed control. And the deceleration, we can use the same variable here, the jog deceleration. Here, the acceleration, deceleration, and jerk, we can set the same parameter from the move jog, that command. Okay, this is a stop, MAS, motion access stop. That stop is specially used to stop the jog, okay? So, and the command will be used like this way. So, and this is a, a manual mode. So once we shift from auto to manual mode, so by default, it will trigger one jog stop at first. And once we press the key, once we fire the jog move, and once we release the button, so this signal will turn on again. So it will trigger the jog stop again. So that means if we need to jog this uh, access, we need to press and hold that key. And once we release the jog forward or jog reverse button, so our access will stop. That is the jog concept, right? And follow this manual jog stop, we will program a global stop. So the global stop, we will use the similar way MAS. So we will drag this MAS again, select this uh, virtual access and motion control. And this time I will select the MC motion control stop only, stop. This is a global stop. And the stop type, I will select all and the command to stop this access. So we can use the positioning command dot stop command. Okay, let's expand that and let's type in change deceleration. So here, especially use one stop deceleration. So we can use mc underscore vr dot stop deceleration. And this deceleration, so we can control that deceleration that deceleration could be a little bit higher, so that can stop the access immediately quicker. So for example, we can set 4,000 here. And this deceleration unit, we can set this. Change the deceleration jerk. The jerk also can be set higher. We can directly write one value, for example, write 5,000, write a direct value here, okay? And this jerk unit, we can set unit. So using this variable, we can control the stop deceleration here. Sometimes we need to stop as quicker as possible. But in some cases, if we try to protect the mechanical things, so probably this stop deceleration could be a lower value to stop the machine smoothly. Okay, till now we have a reset, we have a power on and a power off, we have a home and a manually jog and a manually stop. Also, we have a access stop. Basically, all those motion control instructions are commonly used motion control instructions, especially in manual mode. Let's temporarily park here. In next video, I will show how can we program the move relative and the move absolute motion control. Basically, that is a common used command in automatic mode. All right, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.